Today's medical center is a modern and sophisticated and busy place. Every day, perhaps several thousand people come through the doors, every one of them on a specific mission. Every day, thousands of messages arrive by phone or data link or fax or mail, and thousands are sent out. And every day, thousands of items are called for and delivered, everything from a single sheet of paper to a complex piece of equipment. A medical center like this is, for all practical purposes, a living organism. But it does not have blood in its veins. It has information. Whatever job you may have, nurse, lab technologist, physician, a person in finance or maintenance or administration or engineering, perhaps the most important thing you can know about the information that you handle is that it does not belong to you. You may be a key figure in developing information, in working with it, concluding from it, breaking new ground with it, but it does not belong to you. It belongs to the medical center, and that's why everything you handle has to be handled with care. The formal way of saying that is information security. Today, medical centers are focusing more on security standards than ever before. Why? Because of automated hospital information systems, they represent a major investment of time and money. In the past, a patient's lab information and his account information may have been on the computer, but soon now, everything will be. Most likely, there will be many computers at each nursing station, not just one. And there may be computers in affiliated physicians' offices tying into the system. Computers are excellent protectors of information, yet when there is a breach, the problem can more easily get out of hand. But in focusing on new computer systems and learning how to use them, please don't forget the more traditional forms of information. There will still be thousands of documents moving through the medical center. Some paper will be eliminated by new computers, but by no means all of it. Any paper containing confidential information must be guarded, and many times experience shows it is not. Say your job is to deliver confidential reports to several nursing stations on various floors. As a matter of convenience, you leave the cart next to the elevator as you go down into one wing. Anybody can now come up and read this, or for that matter, take a copy. Conclusion? Don't do it or take this. Your fax machine is receiving a confidential message. You have requested it, but you're not here to pick it up. Now, anybody can read it, even somebody who picks it up innocently. Conclusion? Don't do it. You're at your desk, and your name is similar to two other names on the staff. When you open a confidential envelope, you are into the first paragraph before you see that it is not for you. Conclusion for you? Simply don't read it and put it back in the mail. It's everybody's job to handle this envelope responsibly. You're making 20 copies of a registered confidential document. It's a plan for labor negotiations coming up. You walk away with your 20 copies, leaving the original on the machine. Don't do it. In all these cases, you actually know the right thing to do, of course. But there's a difference between knowing the right thing and doing the right thing. Only when you have respect for the information will you handle it with care. And this care will be continuous, including the proper disposal of paper that's no longer needed. All along the line, it's better to be too cautious than not cautious enough. Something else must be protected, too. Talk, the spoken word. Because a lot of information is transmitted just by talking about it, sometimes in the wrong places. And the spoken word is not easy to guard, particularly when you're in a hurry and something important has come up. Could you come back upstairs and take another look at Miss Remsen for me? Be glad to. I'm not exactly sure what the trouble is. Two hours ago, she was doing fine, but... You just never know who's riding with you in an elevator. 
What are some of the a family member, an insurance adjuster, a reporter, anybody at all. Here, the patient's situation has suddenly become public property. How about her leg? She doesn't mention. You're part of a meeting that is a sensitive discussion of proposed basic changes at the medical center. I see no way that I could agree to give such an individual that much discretion in a situation like this. But why not? Well, it goes against my training, and it also goes against the law. In fact, you received the call But look at this. You've left the door open. Your meeting is, in effect, a public meeting. Anybody can hear your words. Don't do it. Close the door. You're on a busy night shift, and on the phone, this is what you hear. I have a patient on your floor who was admitted by Dr. Callahan, um, Mary Kingman. I need to know her latest blood count before I talk with Callahan. I'm sorry, doctor. I'll have to call your office with that information. Hello, fourth floor. This is Charlie Johnson's father. He's in 408. I want to know the results of his biopsy this afternoon. Mr. Johnson, you'll have to get that information from your doctor. Hi, this is Lizzie Lambert, and I'm crazy about the lead guitar player of The Spoons, Dinky Meserol. Now I know you've got him there. I read it in the paper, and I have to find out how he is because I love him so much. I'm sorry, Miss Lambert, that information really is not available. I can Actually, if you're alert and you know the rules, guarding the spoken word is not all that difficult. I'm sorry. But look at this. You're having lunch at a nearby restaurant, and at the next table is somebody you've seen at work. She is, of course, one of those people who thinks that knowledge is power. I think you're kidding me. I'm not kidding. I saw him at 514. You know, he doesn't want anyone to know he's in the hospital. I think I know the reason. The wrong words in the wrong place at the wrong time. And in this case, it's not even a careless mistake. It is deliberate. And that's even worse. But when you come right down to it, are these lapses in information security all that important? Well, the answer is yes. They're all important simply because you never know which lapse is going to have consequences. Many have no consequences at all. Many have grave consequences. The fact is that when information is not handled with care, people can be misinformed, people can be hurt or endangered or arrested or sued and the medical center itself can be irrevocably harmed. Hospital information systems are today creating an entirely new information scene. Computers are always designed to simplify life, but they can also make it more demanding. You always have to keep up with a computer. So now, you'll have to get a clearer idea of what the categories of information are and what you should do about them. Public. All the information that links the medical center to the world is public. Internal. Internal information includes things like routine memos and schedules, employee newsletters, public policy documents, material which, if disclosed, would not necessarily cause harm to the medical center. Confidential. Confidential includes all information that must be protected from disclosure to anyone who does not have a specific patient care or business need for it. For example, test results, sign-out sheets, morning reports, payroll records, personnel records, medical records. Registered confidential. Registered confidential information is to be used by specific individuals only. It is for their eyes only. Your computer password is a clear example. And also any material related to legal or labor negotiations. Unauthorized disclosure of this information could cause severe harm to patients, employees, or the medical center itself. The basic rules for handling computer-based hospital information are really quite simple. Some terminals, though not all, will be in sight of people passing by the unit. And so whenever you leave your screen, no matter how inconvenient it may seem at the moment, log off. And at the end of the day, log off and lock up 
just do it. Make it second nature. No matter where you work, handle your diskettes with extreme care. Label them, make backups regularly for protection, and store them in a drawer with a lock. If you're tempted to make illegal dupes of proprietary software, if you're tempted to use a diskette not approved by the medical center, resist the temptation. You could get into legal trouble, and you could unleash a virus that might disable the entire system. No matter how busy you are, no matter how trusted your coworker, no matter how reasonable it might seem in a given situation, never, no, never, write down your computer password. And don't whisper it either. Basically, that's it. It takes years of time and thought and planning and money to get a hospital information system into operation and to get the bugs out so that it will finally work at the designed level of efficiency. But unless you can see the need for security, all the time and thought and planning and money will not be worth much. As with many things in life, it all comes down to the attitude of the people. And once you see the need for handling information with care, well, that is what will happen. It's that simple.